So, 1917 is the story of Lance Corporal Blake and Lance Corporal Schofield, two young British men in the midst of the very first World War. The day is April 6th, 1917, and our two young men are tasked by General Aaron Moore, played by Colin Firth, to cross enemy lines to go nine miles into deep German territory to deliver a message to a... 1600 men deep company that is just about to attack a German line at dawn. It's a trap. He tells them, uh, uh, they, they are going to get lured in and every one of those men is going to be murdered, including Lance Corporal Blake, one of our two protagonists brother. So with personal stakes on the line, the two of them have less than 24 hours to make it across no man's land, trenches, barbed wire, snipers, and everything in between to deliver a message or 1600 men are going to die. Time is the enemy in Sam Mendes' 1917. Andy, what did you think of 1917? Uh, this movie was incredible. Um, great performances, nothing but tension throughout the whole time. Um, just the production of it. They, they recreated a lot of world war one things. I mean, th- complicated things like these trenches, these giant, uh, ditches, um, these barbed wire kind of no man's land areas, um, mine shafts, uh, other things. I mean, it was just from a production standpoint, incredible. Like it, it must've been such a massive undertaking. And then at the same time you have, uh, these are two protagonists c- kind of having to navigate really dangerous, y- you know, and it's like the, the Germans are gone, but are they gone? Kind of, uh, you know, they have to navigate some really dangerous, uh, terrain and situations. And, uh, the film is also f- made to look like it's one continuous shot, which, uh, which we know it's not, but it's, it's filmed essentially in real time, like the two hours or so that, that you watch it, the, the, you know, there's no time kind of cut out. Um, so yeah, I, th- I thought it was incredible. And it does the thing that a lot of war films should do is it, it's making a lot of um, commentary about war and the nature of war and uh, the pointlessness of it in a lot of ways. And also giving you insights of about what it was to be there at that time. Yes, uh, I'm just about in 100% agreement. This movie is tremendous. It is triumphant. Uh, it is such a charming tale, and kind of a harrowing tale, I should say. It's that charming, of, of two young men who are completely out of control. They have no control over anything that is happening to them. They are given orders. They don't know what's what's behind enemy lines. They don't know what's over the ridge line right next to them. They don't know what's coming around the corner. All they know is they have to make it from A to B in the most efficient way possible. It is such an interesting way to look at something like a world war, especially one that not many people remember. I I compared this movie to They Shall Not Grow Old in the way that that movie, uh, a documentary about World War One, doesn't look at the worldwide war. It focuses on British soldiers during the World War. It's just a very specific look at a very broad, large battle. And that's exactly what this is. It's one very specific tale in like wrapped in a huge sweeping problem. And and the way these two two young men are forced to overcome obstacles and odds and certainly their own fears in what what feels like one long take shot by the incredible Roger Deakins, of course, cinematographer of Blade Runner 2049, last year's mega hit. Uh, (laughs) It's such an effective look at filmmaking, storytelling, pacing, theme, structure, acting, I loved so much about this movie, and and the further I get away from it, the more I like it. So I'm glad it's on my top ten. It'll probably move up a couple slots as time goes on. Andy, let's talk about 1917. I think the best place to start talking about this is the setting. It's exactly what you said. Right. The trenches, the battlefield, <laughs> the no man's land. And Sam Mendes has taken absolutely no prisoners in making this thing look as authentic as possible, and I think he I think he did it. Yeah, so the the opening shot, um, you know, you, we found our two uh, corporals um, kind of, I think they're just sleeping, actually, and they get woken up and saying, hey, you've been called to a meeting, and then there's this really long take where they have to walk kind of into the into these trenches and through them, and, they, and there's not any fighting happening, but they are just busy, and they're full of people, and it, and it just, it must have taken, you know, huge amounts of, of rehearsal 
Um, but you get that feeling of what it's like to be in there. They're in, you're in these like six, seven foot trenches. They're packed. There's no like incredibly unsanitary. Everyone's wet. Everyone's just gross, you know? And then you get kind of through the landscape as well, because there's a part where they have to navigate, you know, what are these big craters caused by, by shelling, which eventually fill up with water and things like dead bodies and dead horses. And there's all these, uh, so there's obviously a lot of like death and like destruction around that they have to carefully um, navigate uh, and get through. And it's like you just it, he pulls you into the world of the film because every like they're wet and they're it covered in mud and they're like sinking half the time. It's just it, it does a great job of, of pulling you into it and making it feel incredibly authentic. Yeah, um, as our characters like, were very charmingly presented to them on on ground uh, as they're sleeping night by an orchard and and they're woken up said, and they're told, hey, you got to get orders. And they start walking together towards the camera. And as they're walking, they start walking into the trench. And the camera just kind of sinks down in the trench with them. And you really get this feeling of like, okay, we're, we're descending into the adventure. What you're descending into is hell. Uh, and you're about to find out how bad it's going to get for these guys. But you you really presented this this tremendous look at nature versus like humans humanity and 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 throughout the film we have these muddy horrible trenches that are covered in corpses and rats and and bombs and everything else set against this beautiful backdrop of these gorgeous fields in spring uh, or actually december it's right by christmas i think they said uh, mm-hmm. november maybe um our our, our two protagonists are, are are quickly given their orders within the first 10 minutes of the film this movie wastes no time, uh, and as they approach no man's land, they they, they run into a character who, who who very very plainly explains to them that they're most likely going to die, that nothing good is going to happen, and by then you're on the roller coaster and and you're in and you're you're going and and this kind of one take illusion that movies like Birdman have done before has always worked really well on me. Um, because I, I love long takes. They're not easy to do. They're deceptively easy. Um, they're very hard to pull off, and this movie does them so well. And as our soldiers are crossing no man's land and then getting into enemy trenches and then dealing with enemy fire, like this constant sense of tension never goes away. You're never given a break. Um, they're always in danger. They're always on the run. Time is always ticking away. Um, and it's such a great framework to tell a intimate story in um, on top of the world war, which is huge. Um, tremendous setting. And, and, and I loved it. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it's, just, it's incredible. Like I said, it's um, there's a reason it's on our top 10 and the, the way they've recreated it. And, it, and it's everything from the costumes to the, the environment themselves, uh, armor tanks guns all all that stuff it 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 really is authentic and i i only recently kind of learned about world war one through a very long podcast series that was about 25 hours long and everything i imagined in my head is what i got to see on screen being that this is a podcast we should probably mention that what that podcast is Uh, oh yes that was the uh hardcore history uh, hardcore history World War it, is hard, it is hardcore, by the way. If you've never heard it, worth a listen, but my God. Um, we should talk about our actors, of course, our two young men that are holding up this film. Uh, Lance Corporal play, Blake, played by Dean Charles Chapman, who was one of the Lannister kids in <laughs> Game, Game of, of Thrones. Thrones. Uh, he was, which one? Tommen. Tommen Lannister. Uh, he is younger brother of Joffrey. That should give you an idea, without spoiling what happens in Game of Thrones, not that it matters. The other, uh, uh, Lance Corporal Schofield, the other guy, is played by George McKay, who we we went and saw this together. Uh, we looked it up after. This kid has not been in anything you've seen. <laughs> yeah, mostly I've, British TV. Yes, uh, he's not been in anything I've seen. Uh, I, I, I don't know where he came from, but he's great, and I'm excited to see him in more. Um, I thought I saw he was going to be in something coming up uh but i can't remember what his imdb doesn't say um but keep an eye out for him it reminds me of um the kid who played solo what's his name uh oh, I know oh god talking about. I've, I can't I've flubbed i panicked all right hold on uh but anyway <laughs> these these two kids are tremendous 
they're passionate. Uh, they're scared in this movie, and it shows. And that those long takes, man, they're not easy for actors. Like those are hard to do, and they they really get you immersed in the characters, and it matters. Um, I, I told you one of our leads already, uh, or leads or side characters already. Colin Firth plays General Aaron Moore. There are a handful of other famous actors uh, in this yeah, movie. Yeah, make not cameos. A, I, I not a whole lot of actresses uh, because you know it's it's World War One. Um, but I, overall, I, I was very pleased with our very simple cast. Like I said, it's a very simple story, and it, it's effective. And there are hundreds of side characters and other little soldiers walking through the trenches that these guys are constantly walking by who are just background noise um, mm-hmm. compared to what's actually happening. Really, really good stuff. Yeah, I mean, these are, these are two friends who are on this mission. And when they don't realize they're on this mission initially, like he just says, hey, like he, uh, the guy comes up to him and says, hey, pick someone and come with me. And so he does, just cause he's basically the guy he's sitting next to, and so th- and now they get on this kind of suicide mission. <laughs> um, but it, you know they have a great friendship, and they have to you know depend on each other for uh, survival to get through um, everything that happens. I mean, it's a very dangerous uh, mission because they just them two have to, and it's only, I mean, only nine miles, but it's nine miles on foot. It's nine miles across uh, trenches and barbed wire and. Uh, you know, just, the enemy is still out there somewhere. The the Germans have retreated, but uh, to what point? You know, um, so it's it's just it's an incredible uh, it's it's a buddy buddy cop story in a lot of lot of ways. Yeah, um, like the, their relationship is is really touching and moving and really uh, Im, important. Something else that touched me in this movie was the cinematography. Uh, I mentioned this is done by Roger Deakins, who's done a ton of great films, um, including Blade Runner 2049. Although it's all one take, which isn't something Deakins really experiences. Deakins is really experienced in. Um, he still manages to pull off these fantastic set pieces, these fantastic moments visually. Um, a couple that really stand out to me, um, as our characters are traveling through No Man's Land originally, they go down into this very large crater. Uh, somebody tells them early, they said, don't fall in the craters. Uh, they're deeper than you think. There's a bunch of bodies in there. You, you don't want to be in a crater. Well, at one point, they have to go through one. And as they dip down into it, this one long take shot has a camera on a crane, and the crane comes all the way down just over the water, just over it, and it just hovers as it follows these guys. And then it comes right back out with them. Um, and it's such a clean shot and it's so well done. And I have no idea how they put that together mechanically, but it looks fantastic and it keeps you totally tuned into what's happening. The other is when our characters finally approach evening, it's night and they have to work their way through those ruins of this just little, little town that's been absolutely demolished and there's flares going off at night. And so in between pitch black, we have these flares flying up in the sky and light just shifting all over the place and you can't see anybody so naturally when you're trying not to get shot by bad guys and you can't see what the hell's going on um it creates a sense of chaos and panic um in this beautiful kind of way that's fantastic deacons is is brilliant at it um anyway two shots i really loved andy what'd you think of the cinematography um i keep using the word incredible but yeah like everything in this film everything looks so well like you like you said that sweeping shot uh through the crater is really really nice and also there's a couple of really long takes through trenches uh where you know people had to pull this camera backward while they all this they walk through these long trenches and they go through and there's also you know as you've seen uh, kind of from the trailer uh, th- there are a couple of kind of larger war pieces where there's like a bunch of people running and there's a, a bombardment and um, you know, that stuff is, is incredible too. It, it reminds me so much of Dunkirk, which you still haven't seen, but, <laughs> but it, it, it has the Blu-ray. It's on my shelf. But, but, watched it. but D- Dunkirk is very much about uh, tension and rat and kind of ratcheting up the, the tension constantly. And this film does, does the same thing while also, uh, you know, saying a lot about uh, the nature of warfare. Mm-hmm. It's worth mentioning as uh, uh, Deacons and Sam Mendes have worked together previously outside of Blade Runner 2049. Uh, Roger Deacons also shot Skyfall and Sicario and Fargo. If you want to go way back to what that guy's been working on back in 96, he shot that. So guy works hard. Um, 
I think the the soundtrack is, is is triumphant when it needs to be, and it's it's quiet when it doesn't. Um, often there's not a whole lot going on in the soundtrack; it's just kind of quiet. Um, yeah, it's just that sense thing. of foreboding constantly. Yeah, um, but overall, I thought the set design was incredible. Like you said, uh, when you when you get pulled into a trench, it feels like they just dropped you in 1917 in a trench. Um, it doesn't feel like you're ever in a studio, which I'm sure they were at some points, but it feels like everything shot on location. Um, the editing is nearly seamless. There's a couple of points that seemed a little, little clumsy, but otherwise, I mean, that's it's mm-hmm. what's going to happen. Um, man, I, I thought a lot of this movie, the costume design is fantastic. Um, I, I, any, any other wrap up thoughts? I feel like we're getting any more. You start to get into spoilers. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, just about a few of the themes uh, of the film. It's obviously about war, but it's you know it touches on a lot of things about how you know these are very young men, um, about just kind of the pointlessness of it. There's a part where they're you know they get on a, a truck that that's kind of behind enemy lines. It's not occupied, and they said you know we fought for years over this, and it's just open fields with kind of nothing, um, and you know there, there's moments of of great humanity juxtaposed with great destruction. You know, a character will do have to do something, or will do something good in one moment, and then have to turn around and do something terrible in in the next. And that's just kind of the nature of of war, and how sometimes you just you don't have time to process anything that happens. Like something tragic might happen, and you just have to move on. Like you don't have time uh, to grieve or to mourn or to <laughs> deal with the process that what's happening. You just have to go, go, go. And so I, I thought. You know, the film, while it tells a small story, it also comments on larger things. And that's another reason it's so great. Mm. Andy, would you recommend 1917? Yeah, ab- absolutely. It's it's an incredible film. It is, uh, you know, there's not a lot of things about World War One, although I think there is more starting to be more more interest. Uh, it's a heartwarming story. It's it's tense. It's not too violent. Like, you know, this is one of those th- those war movies where actually not a whole lot happens. There's not a, a ton of uh, battles or anything like that. It's more about the the tension and and the mood. Uh, that being said, you know, it is it reminds me a lot of Saving uh, Private Ryan. So there are some in- intense uh, scenes, and so people should be aware about that uh, for content warning wise. But overall, absolutely re- recommend it. I would recommend it as well. It is a ton of fun. If you're a history buff, you're gonna love it. I'm excited to go see it probably with my dad in a couple weeks. Hopefully it's in Houston by then, because I could not find a screening for this movie anywhere, um, especially in Houston, Texas. Uh, Fortunately, we found a couple in DFW, so it all worked out. But um, it's so much fun, and it's so engaging, and it just pulls you in and just does not let go. And for two hours, you're tuned in. I didn't check my watch once. I didn't want to. I didn't want to look away. Um, I I loved watching this movie. It was a ton of fun. Uh, It's a great time, 1917. Do not walk, run to the theater. And with that... That is our final review of 2019.